Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank the Lord for his mercies. Thank the Lord for another day. Thank the Lord for another opportunity to share with all of you precious folks the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Glory to God. A very good morning to you. Sister Catch, God bless you from Abuja. Sister Sarah, God bless you. I see you, brother. Praise. Good morning, sir. Sister Annie, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Nanya, God bless you. Glory to God. Always excited to see you all. Thank God for all that he's doing in your life. Thank God for his good hand upon your life. Dad Obiara, good morning, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning, sir. So excited to see every one of us here this morning. Glory to God forevermore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Brother Henry. Well, welcome. This is Morning Manor. Again, you're welcome to today's edition of Morning Manor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you always for tuning in. Thank you always for joining uh, with us. Thank you so much for standing in faith with us and for us combining together to enjoy the blessed anointing that is always released when God's word is exalted, when God's word is declared. Well, let's get into today's teaching or today's thoughts. Father, we just want to thank you for this day. Precious opportunity again to share with your precious people your holy word. Your word is a light unto our feet, a path, a light unto our, a lamp unto our path, a feet, a light unto our path. This morning, we just ask that you breathe upon us again. Blessed Spirit of God, you know what is most needed today. We ask that you just take over this time. Bless your people, anoint your people, move your people into new realms of victory and testimony today. And we vow to give you the glory and honor and praise for all that will be wrought here today. We'll be content to receive the blessing. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, good morning again. Let's uh, get into today's teaching. Um, we're sharing on the thoughts on the thought, framing your world with the word of God. Framing your world with the word of God. And we're taking as, as our text again, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. I want to read that this morning again from the King James Version of the Bible. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Again, remember, we're talking about faith in God, faith exercised in God, faith exercised towards God. Faith not exercised necessarily in things, in people, in systems of this world or in any other thing, but faith exercised towards God or faith exercised in God. And he said, for by it, by this faith, this faith in God, the elders obtained a good report. And the elders here, he's talking about a men and women of old, men and women captured in Bible days who walked with God. And like we've been saying, the good report that they received before God was that God gave them his commendations. And, and they also saw manifestations of God's goodness, God's power in their lives. Now, we also understand that Romans 10, 17 says, without faith is impossible to please God. Or oh, I beg your pardon, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So there is no faith, you cannot exercise faith in God or towards God without first having heard from God or received a word from God. So these people who received a good report from God did so by faith. And if they did so by faith, it's because they walked with God, they heard God speaking to them, and they acted upon what he said. So faith is hearing God speaking to you and acting upon what he says. And we know that the basis for faith for us living in our present day dispensation is the word of God. He has captured and documented all his precious thoughts to us in the word of God. So there's no hearing from God outside of the word of God. All of, the, all of our hearing from God as Christians, as believers, as people of faith, all of our hearing from God should be centered around the word of God. So the word of God is the key or the center of our, or the source of our inspiration. If somebody says in this New Testament dispensation of grace, I've heard from God, then he, the, what, what they say or what they, what they claim to have heard must have an authority or an authority backing from the word of God. So he said, by the faith in God, by faith in God, the elders obtained a good report. Now verse 3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith or through faith in God, we understand 
that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And our thought for several weeks now has been, you know, basically gleaned out of this third verse of the 11th chapter of Hebrews. And we see in how God created the earth, how God created the earth, we see how he set things up to operate upon the face of the earth. Now, the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, that we are workers together with God, workers together with God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it says we are laborers together with God. So you see, God, God did not just set up uh, or give us this understanding of how he created the earth just simply for us to be informed. But God gave us this understanding for him to understand how he set things up to operate on the earth and how we can cooperate with him, how we can work together with him, how we can labor with him to see definite results in our lives. So we see from the idea or the concept of how God created the earth, how God structured things to be. Now, when we understand how God structured things to be, then we understand that life is not just an adventure in guesswork or happenstance. That every result we see in the earth today was created from some place. And if it was created from some place, it can be altered, it can be changed. Now, let's, let's get it more direct now. Every result you see in your life was created from some place. And you are a participant, sorry, you are a very, very important pre, uh, player in the results that, you know, are manifesting your life. Um, the way God structured life to be is that results cannot just come in your life and bypass you. You have a say-so in the ultimate outcome of your life. So whether you participated in the process consciously or unconsciously, God is showing us through the word of God that we are responsible participators in the outcome of our life. And that should not bring condemnation to our life. That should simply help us understand that if things seem to be going out of control, they can come back into control. You know, we don't have to approach life with a sense of helplessness. You know, it seems like I can't do anything about this. No, no, no. Faith in God makes us understand. And that's our first point. Faith gives us an understanding, an approach towards life. So faith in God informs us of how life functions, how our Father God created life to function, and how that he has empowered us in the process of generating or contributing to the results of our lives. Now, when we have that kind of understanding, faith gives us that understanding that we can be very important contributors to the results that we get. So we don't have to stand aloof on the sidelines, so to speak, just looking at life and just, you know, kind of thinking, well, what will be, will be, or just hoping and wishing that someday, somehow, things in our lives will change. Or maybe we're faced with circumstances and situations and we're thinking, well, this thing seems so impossible. The, the, the forces that are at work and the, the situations or the circumstances contributing to this result may be things beyond my control. No, but faith in God informs us that as a believer, nothing is beyond your control. You know why? Because you're in partnership with God and nothing is beyond God's control. So if God has given you the privilege to participate in life with him, then truly faith in God shows us that nothing is beyond our control. So faith in God gives us an understanding. And the understanding it gives us is a way of looking at life, a way of interpreting life, a way of engaging in life to be able to understand that we can introduce God's power in the circumstances of our life and drive our life, so to speak, towards the direction that God has ordained us, ordained it to go. The second thing that the word of God tells us here in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 is that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Man's life experience, the word worlds, there's the word aeons. It talks about dispensations of time, man's life experience. This is where we get the heart or subject of our teaching. That the Bible says that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And it said, so, uh, and the word worlds, there's the word aeons, man's life experience, dispensations of time. It's also talking about the material aspect of the universe. God framed this world with the word of God. Now, the, why he did that was to set a pattern, a pattern, a pattern in place. God set a pattern of creation in place for us to see. And Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 27 tells us that we are created in the likeness and image of God. First and foremost, an exact duplicate of God, an exact replica of God to function upon this earth just like God functions. Now that's a great honor indeed. That's a great responsibility indeed. And then secondly, he created us to be speaking spirits. So God is setting this account for us to understand of how he created the world, how he, how he frames man's life experience for us to understand that he has put us on this earth to copy him. Now, like we said, consciously or unconsciously, we're involved in this process. But the aim of this teaching is to help us understand that God wants us to consciously take part in the process 
of affecting or shaping or framing our life experience upon the face of the earth. Now, I'd like to read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2 from the Amplified Translation of the Bible, Amplified Classic. I find it quite interesting. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. I want to read that from the Amplified Classic. Or well, let me just read, read the whole, whole, whole of it from the Amplified. It says, now faith, verse 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1 from the Amplified Classic. It said, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things that we hope for. Faith being the proof of things that we do not see. You see this? Faith in God or faith in God that we have through God's word is the proof of things that we do not see. So whatever God's word tells us already exists. Whatever God has spoken in his word concerning us is already a reality. You see, so this is our confidence when we're handling God's word. That when we're when we dealing with changing things that we're experiencing or seeing, we don't change them by wishful thinking. We go and find out what God has already established concerning that situation. You see, what God has said in his word, he has already established as a reality concerning the outcome of that situation. So operating in faith is really taking what God has already established and using it to alter what we can see. So he says that faith in God is proof of things we do not see. It's the conviction of their reality. Look at this now. So the word of God generates in us faith and a conviction that the things that God has spoken are the reality concerning our lives. That the things that we're, we're faced with today are not the ultimate reality. The things that we can see, touch, and taste with our physical senses are not the ultimate reality. But the things that God has said are the ultimate reality. He says it's the conviction of their reality. And I like this. He said, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith in God's word or faith in God or God's word that generates faith. Perceiving as real fact that which is not revealed to the senses. Now, why does he use the word perceive? Because the word perceive means that it's, it's, it's giving you access to another reality. The things you may be faced with, the things that you, you can see with your optical eyes, that you can, the things that you engage with with your five physical senses, your sense of touch, your sense of taste, and all of that, you see, they may be very, very real. But the Bible says that there is another reality that God wants us to live by. So the understanding that faith gives us is that there is a world of unseen realities. And these realities are described to us by the word of God. And God has designed the, the life of man or our lives as his children to live by unseen realities. God wants us to live our life by unseen realities. So faith in God gives us this understanding that there is another world out there. It's a world of unseen realities. We can't see it, but it is real. And God has already established certain things in that realm for our good. And the word of God gives us access to that realm. The word of what God tells us what we have the privilege or right to experience. And if the word of God says it, the word, the word of God has established that the thing that it has declared to us is our potential reality, even in this life. So the, the life of faith basically is the life of unseen realities. The life of faith is a life that considers the unseen realities of God's word above the things that we can see and make contact with with our physical senses. So it says, for by faith, verse 2, or let me just jump to verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, were fashioned, were put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. I'll read that again. By faith we understand that the worlds during the successive ages were framed, fashioned, put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So we discover that the word frame there is the word, Greek word katatizo. And look at what the Amplified is really bringing out here. He said, to frame is to fashion, is to put in order, is to equip for its intended purpose by the word of God. So God's word is given to us to shape our life experience. God, God's word is given to us to put in order our life experience. God's word is given to us to mend our life experience. God's word is given to us to repair our life experience. So God's word is a handy tool given to us by, through which and by which we cooperate with Almighty God to draw into our present reality the realities of the unseen world. Now, every Christian is advantaged because by redemption, by inheritance in Christ, you have access to the unseen realities of God's word. Of God's word. 
you have access to a reality beyond this world. That means that you don't have to stand paralyzed in the face of any result that you see. Your ultimate right as a child of God is to bring the unseen realities of God's word to bear in your present circumstance. So if something is going on in your life and you look at what God's word says and say, no, according to God's word, this is supposed to be the outcome. You have the right through faith to begin to engage the reality of God's word and create a bridge, like I said, between the heaven and the earth and draw into your present life experience the reality of what God says. So you see here, faith in God gives us understanding, number one. Number two, faith in God shows us that the world's, man's life experience is framed by the word of God. So God put you on this earth to participate with him. Remember, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 says, we are workers together with him. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, we are laborers together with him. And the tool that we use in working with God, in laboring together with God, in cooperating with God, to bring to come to pass the reality of what God has spoken concerning our lives is the word of God. So God's word is very central in this process. No child of God can ever become all that God has intended them to be without an active engagement with the word of God. No, no, no child of God can, can, can ever be able to shape their life experiences or change the present realities that they are encountering right now without the word of God. The word of God is the key to the realm of unseen realities. It shows us what is ours potentially in Christ. It, sh it shows us what can become a living reality in our life right now, despite our present circumstance. And it also creates the bridge between that invisible world and this physical world. So one of the concepts of faith is to understand that, hey, there's an invisible world out there. There's a world of unseen realities out there. And there are real things in that world that God has intended for me as a co-creator with him to transfer into my physical experience. So nothing I'm going through right now is not subject to change. So in framing your world with the word of God, God is giving you the ability to participate with him in, as he has, he has created you in his likeness and image. And one of those capabilities and capacities he has given to you is to use unseen realities, the unseen realities of his word to change the seen realities that you experience. To use the unseen realities of his word to change the unseen realities that you may currently be, ex be experiencing that are not in line with his word. Now, let me just finish this from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. I'm going back to the King James translation now. It says, faith also shows us that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It shows us the creative process. It shows us how things, God created things, God created this world that we see, and even man's experience, how God framed or fashioned it to operate. So, a rule of thumb in creation is this. God uses unseen realities. God uses invisible things to create visible results. Now, you must understand that in your life, there is nothing in your life that cannot change. But your tools, the tools to change them is the word of God. That's your tool. You have, an, you have access to invisible realities, invisible realities, unseen realities. The word of God shows you that. So when you look at the word of God and you see any result in your life and your life is not consistent with that result, understand that God's word is the highest authority in your life. You have the privilege as a child of God to take the word of God, to pull from that realm of unseen realities and to actually create exactly what God's word says in your physical experience. Now that removes you from the average, you know, traveler in this life. You're not, you're not just here in life to just take anything life offers you. No, you're a co-creator with God. And your authority to create is God's eternal word. Remember, whatever God has said is already a reality. God uses his words to create and God expects you to use your words to create. Put your words in God's mouth and begin to create like him. Glory to the name of the Lord. Now let's quickly again go to 2 um, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Well, again, let me back up to verse 16. It says, Paul the Apostle talking, he said, For which cause we faint not, for though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. So Paul talked about light afflictions. 
that may come across the way of a life of a believer. What is a light affliction? An affliction really is a pressure, something that a circumstance that seems to pressure you, a circumstance that seems to be speaking to you and saying that, look, there is, there, there is no way that you can get a different result from what you're saying. It's a pressure, something pressing on you. Now, this can happen in any area of your life. It can happen in your finances. You can go through, I mean, people go through financial pressures. People go through health pressures. It is simply a physical circumstance that is creating or seem to be creating a particular result in your life. And it seems by its mere disposition, by its mere appearance in your life, it seems to suggest that there is no way you can get a different result. And truly, when you look in the natural realm, you may look at it and say, there's no way I can get a different result. But God is saying that no matter what kind of thing pressures or presses your life, no matter how life-threatening it is, it is possible as long as you're living in this world, you can get a different result. You're not limited. You're not limited to the resources that this world has to offer. You can actually, you can actually invite invisible resources from a superior dimension, a heavenly dimension, an invisible dimension. You can in invite God's assistance. You can invite God's resources, resources that have been kept for you, that in God's mind have been designed to come into your life experience and change the results that you see. So Paul said, our light affliction is but for a moment. It works for us and it a far exceeding weight of glory. And in verse 18, it says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we talk about the conversion process, that the way you convert pressure into testimony is by looking away from the source of the pressure and looking to the unseen realm. This is the advantage that the Christian has. We have an unseen realm. It is real. It is real. It is invisible. But faith tells us that we have resources in the invisible realm that we can invite into our physical experience and it will displace it. The Bible calls it an eternal weight of glory. In other words, God's goodness is waiting to be manifested in the life of a Christian. And the conversion process is this. Look away from the things that you see. Look away. Don't consider it. Don't take aim at them anymore. Don't be consumed by the, by the crisis. Don't be consumed. Don't, you see, the more you meditate on natural impossibility, the more you see reason why things can never change. But as a Christian, God is expecting that you take your attention away from natural realities. And you tell yourself, hey, wait a minute. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. According to John chapter 17, there is another realm that I'm connected to. And there are resources in that realm. The word of God tells me what exists in that realm. The word of God tells me the result that I can get. Now, how am I going to invite that result to come? I must look away. I must take my attention away from the things that I see physically. And I must put my attention on the unseen realm. How do I do that? By focusing on God's eternal word. Remember, God's word is the window into the unseen realm. Now, as I begin to focus on God's, on God's eternal word, as I begin to focus on God's word, as I begin to think on God's word, as I begin to allow God's word to reshape my thoughts and my thinking, my expectations, and as I begin to look at my circumstances through the lens of God's word, God's word says something begins to happen. A bridge is created between the invisible world and the visible world. God built an invisible bridge between my current circumstance and the supply house, the storehouse in heaven. And the Bible said, while I look through the word of God, the lens of God's word, at these realities of God's word, I see what God, God's word has, says, has said, I beg your pardon, concerning my situation. The Bible says a conversion process, something begins to take place. God begins to work by his mighty power. A bridge is created between the heaven and the earth. And invisible realities, resources that have been kept for my benefit, begin to flow from the invisible realm into this realm where I am. And the goodness of God begins to displace the pressure that I'm faced with. The goodness of God begins to displace the pressure that I'm faced with. And the Bible said, as we, as we look at things that are, are not seen, instead of looking at things that are seen, the Bible said we come to understand a very important fact, that the things which we see, the things which we have contact with in this physical realm, are subject to change. In other words, they can be cancelled, they can be replaced. Let no circumstance lie to you. No matter how long it has been there, no matter how massive or life-threatening it looks, it can be cancelled, it can be replaced. There is nothing that a Christian will go through in this life that can stand the weight of glory that is waiting for us in the invisible realm. If we we'll do what God says, take our attention away 
from the things that we see and begin to consider the Word of God. Remember, God's Word is not just a storybook. God's Word is a documentation of what exists in the realm of the Spirit. And when we begin to focus on that in our mind and begin to concept, and begin to allow that imagination to take over our mind, before we know what's happening, our conversation starts changing. And we start talking and we start speaking into the circumstance what God's Word says concerning us. Now, that's our part. Our part is to see things the way God sees it or see things the way God has said it in his word, and to say it the way God has said it in his word. That is our part. And as we do that, a conversion process begins to take place. Glory to the name of the Lord. Now back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, glory to God. We'll start reading again from verse 26. Or I want us to back up to verse 25 for today. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 25. He said, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now think about that. The Bible said that there's something called the foolishness of God. That means men may call it foolishness. But it said it's called the foolishness of God. Now God is the all-wise God. The all-knowing God. There's no foolishness in him. But the Bible is saying here, Paul is trying to get our attention to something. He said that what men may even call the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Can you imagine that? <laughs> And he said, the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now look at Paul's thought. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. He said, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound or confuse the wise. And he said that God has chosen the things of the world which are weak, seemingly, to confound the things that are mighty. Now this is the wisdom of God. God takes things that are despised and uses them to confuse things that are highly esteemed. God takes things that are weak in the eyes of men and uses them to displace things that are strong in the eyes of men. That means that when God is going to change your life, what God, the wisdom that God has set in place to change your life circumstances is, is something that the, the educator of this world will laugh at and scorn at. People who are well-schooled in the knowledge of this world, when they see you deploying the wisdom of God, they look at you and say, look at this. This, 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 this is so stupid. This does not make sense. This is not even intelligent. But let me tell you the truth. There's an intelligence of the spirit and there's an, an intelligence of the flesh. There's an intelligence of the world and there's an intelligence of God. Faith is God's intelligence. Faith is God's intelligence. And I tell you the truth. When you're walking in faith, you're walking in God's wisdom. When you're walking in faith, you're walking in God's intelligence. And God has set it that way so that he can make I will make rubbish the wisdom of this world. Now I'm telling you, when you're walking in faith, men may look at you and laugh at you and, and, and you, may, you, may, you may be an object of scorn. But I tell you the truth, when you start getting the results, they won't be laughing at you for too much longer. The Bible said, God has ordained the, and chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. Verse 28, he has ordained and taken the base things of the world, the things which are despised has God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not seen God has chosen to bring to nothing the things that are seen. So this is the wisdom of God. God has ordained that the situations in your life that look so complex, so impossible, God has ordained very simple answers, very simplistic answers, so to speak, for the complex circumstances of your life. You may look at the situation you're faced with, how in the world am I going to get out of this? How in the world are we going to survive in the light of this global pandemic? How in the world are we going to conquer this impossible circumstance? But if you see the operation of the wisdom of God, God has chosen simple things to disgrace, to displace, to level out complicated circumstances. So no matter how complex issues look like in your life today, understand this. The wisdom of God that will turn that complex situation around, the wisdom of God that will turn that difficult situation around is very simple. What is this, what is this wisdom? God has chosen things that are not seen, invisible realities, unseen realities, to displace, to cancel out, to render ineffective, to put to naught, glory to the name of the Lord, to, 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 to put out of operation, to remove the authority of, and to render unemployed in your life the things that look so mighty, glory to the name of the Lord. So you see, when you're taking the word of God and you're allowing it to shape your thinking, you're allowing it to affect your imagination, you're allowing it to dominate the words that you speak. 
When you're speaking God's word to your situation, when you're, when you're choosing to see your situation the way the word of God says it, in the natural, somebody may say, look, you better go and get serious about your life. You better go and find a, you better go and work on a solution for your life circumstance. But this is the solution for your life circumstance. Find out what God has said about it. Begin to allow it to shape your thinking and your imagination. And then open your mouth and start speaking it into your circumstance. Remember, when you open your mouth and speak God's word, you're releasing spiritual forces. You're deploying the wisdom of God. When you're thinking in line with God's word, and when you're speaking in line with God's word, it may look like a simplistic solution. It may look like, like you're wasting your time. It may look like, I mean, I better go and, something, may, your mind, natural mind will tell you, you better go and find a way out of your situation. Look at what you're faced with. Look at imminent disgrace coming to you. Look at life turning stress coming to you. But God said, hey, look at this. This is the, my wisdom that I deployed in creating the worlds, both the seen and unseen aspect of the world. I've, I've bequeathed this wisdom. I've gifted this wisdom to you. Keep thinking in line with my word. Keep speaking in line with my word. And I'll create a bridge between the invisible realm where my resources and answers and solutions are for you, kept for you, and your physical circumstance. And as you do that, you will schedule supernatural events in your life. And I tell you the truth, right in the face of the world, right in the face of the scorners, right in the face of the mockers, and right in the face of the devil, the table that God has prepared for you will come into manifestation. You will see the supernatural invade your life. You will see God's invisible resource invade your life. And what people said cannot happen in your life will happen. And what your natural mind is even telling you, how on earth will this thing happen? You will start seeing it in your life. You will start seeing supernatural provisions. You will start seeing supernatural interventions. You will start seeing God rearranging the landscape of your life experience. And the invisible world will start becoming real to you because you will start seeing the power of God literally altering the, the, the circumstances of your life and bringing them into alignment with what, what Almighty God has said. Praise the name of the Lord. My dear brother, my sister, I honor, you, I honor you this morning or this day for investing your precious time in the Word of God. Remember this, God has given us very simple solutions for the most complex circumstances of life. And if you participate with God's word, God will make you a sign and wonder upon the earth. Eventually, people will start coming to you because they will, they will start knowing you as the man or the woman with answers. Glory to God. The man or the woman that has God's word and has God's wisdom is the man or the woman with answers. Glory to the name of the Lord. Listen, you don't have to know what to do in detail, but God knows what to do. God has those answers. God has financial answers for you. God has health answers for you, economic answers for you. God has already framed your destiny in his word. When you take hold of his word, you start thinking in line with it. You start speaking in line with it. You literally release supernatural forces. And the answers that God has kept for you, the solutions, the strategies that God has kept for you, will start being supernaturally deployed in your life circumstances. And you begin to find out that your life will start taking the form and shape that God has ordained it to be. Nothing in this life you're faced with will ever be a match for the power of God. Nothing in this life you're faced with will ever be a match for the wisdom of God. Nothing in this life you're faced with will ever be a match for God's supernatural resources. You don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, remember this morning, I love you from the depth of my heart and God loves you. Praise the name of the Lord. And I am so convinced that as you, as you just act upon God's word in simplicity and truth, you start touching things that you have never touched before. You start, you start entering places you've never entered before. Listen, God's word is preparing the greatest seasons of your life. The Bible, I mean, it's, it's a clear fact in God's word. Proverbs 4, 9, 9, 18 said, The path of a just man is as a shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. So I say, all that you have seen in the past, God do. And all that you have ever seen God do, and you're seeing God doing now in your life, is nothing compared to that which God will yet do in your life. The best is always yet to come. There's a great adventure of faith ahead of you, great experiences of God's goodness waiting for you. Remember also, at the end of this broadcast, um, a feedback form will pop up there. If you've not filled it out, fill it out as honestly and accurately as possible. Let us know how this broadcast is blessing you. Let us know the testimonies that have been generated as you go forth acting upon the Word of God and any suggestions you may have that will be a blessing to us in moving this broadcast forward. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Also remember to like and share this broadcast and tell your friends that God's word is being shared. God's word is being dispersed to the ends of the earth. I'm expecting that all over the world, we're going to be experiencing great, great testimonies. This global pandemic is no threat to God. Therefore, it's no threat to you. You're a child of God and you're going to record your greatest testimonies in this season in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please join us again tomorrow, 
8 a.m. same time, 8 a.m. GMT plus one. We'll continue to share exciting thoughts from the Word of God. In the meantime, enjoy your testimonies. Have a very blessed day. Get excited about God's Word. Get excited about your future. And determine to apply the Word of God that you hear. And you will have no regrets. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a very great day.